Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve, and in the first half of this episode, we talk about how to mitigate the effects of alcohol, how we personally set New Year's resolutions. Doug, Doug wants to lose like 50 yeah, pounds. Yeah. As well as other topics. In the second half of the show, the guys coach four live callers on questions such as, what is the best workout to cut and bulk? How should I program my workouts for in-season versus off-season training? I'm worried that my upper body is getting overdeveloped compared to my lower body. What should I do? And what's the best way to determine my maintenance calories if I'm more active on some days and less active on others? All right, enjoy the show. All right, check this out. Here are some ways you can mitigate the damage from drinking alcohol. I know uh, New Year's Eve is coming up here. So here's some stuff you can do to help yourself out. Number one, stay hydrated. That includes water and electrolytes. Number two, make sure you eat some food, especially proteins and fats. It helps slow down the absorption of alcohol. So you're less likely to get too drunk or too tipsy. And the last one is don't drink too late. Uh, people t t tend to feel worse when they drink and they also lose a lot of sleep. By the way, there are products up out there that promise to help with you know, some of the negative effects of alcohol. Very, none of them have really been proven. There is one called Zbiotics. This is one of our partners. We work with them. And this is a product that actually helps break down some of the negative byproducts uh, of alcohol. But if you are going to drink, which is totally fine, if you take those steps, you should feel a lot better than if you didn't. So try to take care of yourself uh, during this New Year season. Didn't I hear somebody uh, criticizing you because your podcast promotes drinking alcohol? That's so funny. <laughs> we don't promote because we're Puritans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we can only only do fit things. You know what? I, you know what? When you communicate, um, how, like long term, forever health and fitness, you want to include things that, uh, like alcohol, like eating pizza, you know, not working out sometimes because that's reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you want to develop this like lifelong relationship and this balance, because there are benefits, there are some benefits to drinking alcohol. No, I'm not talking about the studies that show that maybe you, you live longer. Not the antioxidant that. ones. No. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm not one. using that no, angle. Don't, yeah, don't no. bank on those. But I mean, you know, if you're hanging out with people and you're connecting and you're having fun, like, is there value in having the occasional night where you're having a lot of fun with your friends, so long as it doesn't go too too far or whatever. Yeah, you know, absolutely. There's health benefits to that. Even if there are no longevity benefits to it, there are benefits in the moment. You know, I've had some really good times uh, doing it that way. There's always balance, of course. And then again, you can mitigate some of those negative effects if you do it smart. Like if you drink a lot of alcohol and you're you're not drinking enough water or you're not having enough, your electrolytes are off or you're on an empty stomach, or you start drinking so late that you end up going to bed at 4 a.m., like it's going to be a lot worse for you is my point. And there are things you can do to mitigate. And I think if you plan it out properly, you know, you have fun and you end up with some, you know, less of the negative, you know, kind of effect. Yeah, if you can be responsible with it, then, you know, it, it, it's a great thing to have as a celebration, um, you know, like especially at New Year's Eve. Like, I mean, come on. Like it's, it's just one of those things that um, I think uh, – I think as the fitness community, it's just kind of funny because it's always, they're always looking for like staying on this really rigid path. And, um, and I get that for some people, it's like they, all they can think about is like, I just have to stay on track. I have to stay on track, but you know, life is, is, has so many variables in it. If you're not allowing for any flexibility, like there's more, more than likely, uh, you're, when you go off the track, it's going to be a really big leap. You off. know, by the way, there's not nothing necessarily wrong with being on a, a, a path where you, you have no alcohol so long as it's not a dysfunctional, stressful relationship sure. with it. Right. Like, and this is typically people who have a religious practice where they avoid alcohol. That's, and they usually don't have an issue with it. You know, yeah. where it can become a problem is you got the bodybuilder who is rigid like that with everything. And so they don't hang out with people. They don't, um, you know, develop relationships. They avoid parties because I got to make the gains. I got to make the gains. That's actually not good for your health either. In fact, they, they show that bad relationships are as bad as smoking cigarettes. So we're not advocating for doing these things, but if you do, there is a way you could do it where it's a, a, a healthy relationship. And there's definitely a way you can do it where there's an unhealthy relationship. What do you think the percentage of, uh, fitness influencers like, um, 
stress about that. Like that they, they've put themselves like in a light that, you know, they, they eat so clean. They're always ripped year round. They'd never missed workouts. And they like, that's what they present on their, you know, their Instagram all the time. Hmm. And how much, how much stress do you think is caused by, by not sharing either one uh, lying that that's something that you, yeah. you don't really do, you know, or, or not, not saying it or, or you are doing it and just not talking about it. Like, how many, what percentage do you think of them uh, live that kind of a, a life? Well, like, I'll say this. You know this. There's a lot of them out there, that's for sure. Well, both you guys know this as well as I do. A lot of these quote-unquote fitness people who are like body obsessed, they don't, they may not drink because of the calories, but they do drugs because there's no calories in the drugs. And they will choose. I mean, you laugh, but that's true. No, no, I know these. I mean, people. how many times exactly? Yeah. Like, no, no, I don't want the, I don't want to drink because, you know, it's got the alcohol. Ooh, gross. No, give me that cocaine. Yeah, but I'll do these other drugs because there's zero calories. That always there. leans me out so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can run a mile. Yeah. But no, I mean, my, my point is that it's uh it's like there's a healthy and an unhealthy relationship uh with stuff. And um and it could be anything. I mean, you could have an unhealthy relationship with exercise. You could be orthorexic yeah. uh, with diet. Well, Here's the program giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Strong. This is a strongman-inspired workout program. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Strong. Also, one day left for the December special. The at home holiday bundle, which includes Maps Anywhere, Maps Suspension, Maps Prime, and the No BS six pack formula. That bundle special is ending in 24 hours. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. So, what do you guys do? You guys have any plans for New Year's Eve? Or are you going to like figure out um, like going to a party, or is it just kind of low key? Stuff? Doug and I are are partying in Tahoe. Nice. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Doug and you? Doug and I will be at the well, you won't be there. He's gonna be he he's bailing on it. Be, you it's nicely. supposed to be all of us, but I we know, I, I mean you decide to have another kid. Yeah. And yeah. then and then this guy is Why leaving. you say like it's a, it was a bad trade? <laughs> and then, like a slight. And yeah. then this yeah. guy is uh, leaving the country. So yeah, it's gonna be uh Doug and I hanging out and partying. It's my also my sister's birthday. Save you a know, kiss for me. You know, Cassie's yeah. birthday is New Year's Eve. Oh, cool. It's oh, her fortieth. Is it? Yeah, it's oh, her no big fortieth. Oh wow, it's a big deal. Yeah, so it's her her fortieth, so we'll be out. Out there she'll be that i think her and my brother have got a place that i think in 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 south lake they're going to be on on the lake we'll be we'll be at our place and then but we'll come over and visit. you know what the you know what the challenge is with well, there's a lot of challenges but one of the with this with the challenge with kids is and you learn this as a first-time parent i'm sure you, you figure this out adam where if you go to bed late, your kid still wakes up early the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, know when, dude. when you have kids, you're like, oh yeah, we'll go to bed at three and we'll just sleep in and we'll sleep the whole day. No, no. Your two-year-old or whatever <clears throat> is going to still wake oh. up early, is going to still need you to be there. So it sucks. So you can't do the whole sleep in thing. Now, are you guys, the, are you guys okay. the type to uh, plan on what your New Year's resolution is? Do you not even do that? Or do you, on a whim, come up with it on the day? Like, are you thinking, do you think about no, that? No, never do nothing. that. Nothing. Oh, interesting. Never. I, 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 how about I you, Doug? I'm sorry. I was. Oh, you were not paying attention. I was you were watching porn hub again. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I always say that about. Uh, <laughs> you say planning like New Year's. Yeah. So I was saying, are you guys? Are you the type, Kay, that is already thinking about what your New Year's resolution is going to be, or are you the type that just doesn't do anything about it, or are you the type that like, oh, on the day of, you'll come up with something? Like, how much thought do you it's, put around? Generally speaking, I don't make direct plans. I mean, I like to plan for the coming year. Like we do our quarterly planning, right? So mm -hmm. that would be part of that. But right. uh, this year I have been moved to say that I want to take off a little bit of weight that I've added over the holidays here. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten a little bit <clears throat> lax with my eating plan um, and I put on a little extra What is a little fluff. extra? How much? I mean, I'd like to take off 10 pounds. Okay. Really? 10 for you? Mm -hmm. well, you don't look like you're 10 pounds over late to me. Well, I hide it well. Adam's uh, all 15, 20. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Seem more like 30, maybe. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's easy. 10 pounds. No, you, look, I, you, look, you look good right now, I feel yeah, like. Well, awesome. thank you. You drop 10 that. pretty fat, pretty easily. I can. I've seen but you do it. it. it real, I have to basically focus on it, though, because lately I've been going out to eat, you know, oh, yeah. like every week and having some wine and things like that. So I really have to get through the weekend in particular. Uh, without going too crazy, yeah, so yeah. I don't. I don't make. I never. I do the whole New Year's resolution probably because I've worked in the fitness space and I, it just seems so silly. Yeah. Um, 
I do make goals, but it's never like, mm. oh, it's the time to do it is because it's the beginning of the year. It's like an arbitrary date. Yeah. Know? I mean, I, I'm kind of cynical about it, I guess. I, I mean, I think we, we all are a little tainted because of the space. Right. But I, I do like, I, I like every I, year at the beginning of the year you do. Yeah. But I think I, so I think about it earlier. Like I, I'm, I typically know that like I'm heading into new year's coming at the end of this month. And, um, what are some things that I potentially want to, you know, make change in my life going into next year. And so I, I start thinking about that early. Now I don't make like this, it, like this big new year's, you know, deal, but I like that it, everybody is talking about it and thinking about it this time. And so it, it just kind of gives me an excuse of, Hey, you know what? There's some things that I want. I've been wanting to make want, a change. What, or, did you, what is it this year? Just, or, or do you not want to talk about it? <laughs> no, it's not, it's not palliative. I actually really want to, and I'm a little more specific. Like Doug's like, Oh, I want to lose 15 pounds. I'm like, he said 10, by the way, there's a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see, I maybe 20. 15. <laughs> this is starting to creep <laughs> up. Of, starting to creep up through Doug, Doug wants to lose like 50 yeah, pounds. Yeah, He's yeah, underhanded. With really, <laughs> really needs to, you know, a little passive. Well, I, I just told Katrina the other day that I really want to get our our night routine um, in check. I, I and and I think that will actually result in better fitness and all those things. Yeah. I I have I'm really and more so, and that's what I like. I try and look at something like that. Uh, you know, I I have moments where I'm pretty good in it, and I I would say I'm really bad right now with my my night routine. It's really off, inconsistent. Uh, on what time I'm going to mm. bed. Uh, I've also been watching TV. There's a lot of good series on that I'm into. So that's my excuse of why, why I've been watching TV late. And I've gotten, which has also made me fall out of, you know, uh, doing audio books with Katrina. So I really want to hone in on my night routine. Uh, and then I think that, that it will trickle into, you know, uh, more workouts, better fitness, uh, reading, more growth. Like, so... Uh, that's kind of what Dude, I'm. If you do your workout in the morning, your night routine will come together. You have to. I mean, you're right. There, there, and that's that, the only reason why. So I, I and have I've a considered schedule. this, right? So I've considered uh, doing that, but I also um, just like the advice that we give. I give myself like small, obtainable, realistic like goals. Got it. If getting my shit together in the night uh, results in me getting better nights rest and I wake up earlier, then maybe I'll start to. That will be the next level to push that. Um, but I, I that's, that's the only reason why I have a night routine. I, I know it. I know I have to. No, you have to. You're I'm right. Work out the next day, and it's, and it's that is one of the things I used to like about the, the the times, the periods in my life where I have made working out in the morning a a, a thing. It I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Come six seven o'clock at night, I'm yawning and I'm tired, mm -hmm. and so it kind of makes the going down early a, a lot easier. So we'll yeah. we'll see. I that's just feel my like focus. I'm in a perpetual uh, goals. I always have like if I don't have something like all year round, mm -hmm. like some new thing that I'm kind of focused on, then I get like stir crazy, mm -hmm. and and it just bothers the shit out of me. So it's like to pinpoint something for the the actual year of next year is like it's just all just rolls into the next year. So I think that's a good I think I do the same thing. Yeah. I like but I think that because it's New Year's and everybody's talking about it, I tend to make sure that I I have something. Like it's like uh, I'm yeah. always got little goals that I'm always kind of adjusting throughout the year micro adjustments of like oh I need to focus on this right now. Um but I start thinking about it right before. You know what's interesting know. about this is that cuz uh, New Year's resolutions tend to be lofty goals, like lofty things. People tend yeah, to- Yeah, I think big, that's a mistake. Huge yeah. mistake. Yeah, I think it's a mistake. Could you imagine if every year it was just something small, like the compounding effect that it would have with people? Mm -hmm. Because I think the big thing that people need to realize is when you're feeling motivated, and a change of year tends to do that because it feels like a new- By the way, it's arbitrary. Like it's 2023. It's 20, like, that's an arbitrary, you know, okay, the sun is a different place in the, in the sky or whatever. But for some reason, it makes people feel like it's a fresh start and they get this kind of, they feel motivated. And then when you feel motivated, you make goals that you will not keep when you're not motivated. That's the, that's the thing you need to remember. So this is exactly Sal, how I came to the, the night routine thing. It's like, okay, I have these things on, oh, I want to get shredded. Oh, maybe basketball. Yeah, yeah. I have all these other things that are like big kind of loftier yeah. goals that I want. And then how I distilled that down to my night routine is like, I figured like, okay, what is the one th simple thing that I can attack that will move in the direction of all these things that I want to do? Yeah. And let's just, let's just drill that. Like, and that is like, I know that that is what I'm messing up the most right now that I know how important it is. And it's like, if I do that and I, and I, and I hit that out the park, 
most likely it'll uh, it'll lead to my better fitness, which will also lead to my the physique that I want to get, which mm-hmm. then might lead to me playing more basketball, doing those things, mm-hmm. which will lead to me more like so. It's like that's I distilled it all the way down. Even though I have all these other big goals, yeah. Yeah. instead of overwhelming myself, it's like okay, well, what what one big thing can I do? that will move in that direction. And then I'll build on that after I like hit it out the park. Like, okay. And then I'll start saying now it's like morning workouts. Let's do that. And oh, okay, maybe I'm going to get shredded now. And, and then yeah. I'll add on to that later on. It's interesting to think about, cause I could, uh, and I'll ask you guys a similar question mm-hmm. for the last year, like at, at the beginning. So I did kind of like make a loose goal of last year of like, you know, one thing that I knew was a bit of a, a toxic thing that I was introducing to myself and like it was bleeding into a lot of different things like uh, just like consuming a lot of like political pages uh, information mm. and just like inundating myself with all like the current things uh, because I felt like we were like reporting a lot during like the you know the, the COVID hysteria and all yeah. this stuff uh, and so at the beginning of this year I was like no nope, I'm just going to cut myself from this page and this page and this page and then you know that because I didn't want to bring that home and talk about it yeah. and like you know vent and I kept venting about all this stuff going on and I started to hear my kids picking up on it and they were like, you know, reciting stuff that I had like been telling Courtney and I'm just like, dude, this is not good. And then two, I was having conflict with, you know, uh, my, my brother, my parents, and like, we're trying to like mend our family. And then like, so just eliminate all that. And it's been like an amazingly different change. Uh, I love, I love that. I, I, I think that's so powerful because you can, you have the power to, um, alter and manipulate and change your social media feed. And so if you consciously unfollow, if you look at something and go, oh, you know, this isn't really doing me any good. And I tend to get pissed off yeah. from this or whatever, unfollow, 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 block, whatever. Cause here's what happens. What you expose yourself to most often becomes your reality and it skews your view of the world, right? So if what you're looking at is, pissing you off because, oh my gosh, I can't believe how crazy these people are or how crazy this thing is. And this is what you're consuming. That becomes a reality, even though, and my, Jessica does this to me all the time. She's really good at this. She'll say, Sal, how many times have you ran into someone like that in real life? Yeah. You know, and I'll be like, but they're out there. You know, she'll say, okay, but how many times have you actually, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because I feel like this is everywhere because yeah. that's what I'm consuming. Yeah. But the reality is you go about your day how many of those people do you see on a regular basis or how many of those actual conversations do you have or do you see, right? So it's, it's super rare. Yeah, very rare. It's no different than following a bunch of, you know, like, like there's, there's fitness garbage that's out there. And part of that garbage are the body obsessed. Like they're basically selling their bodies, like how sexy and how hot I am and how whatever. If that's all you look at, subconsciously you are creating a reality in which that's the norm yeah. and you will Comparison compare your, you will compare yourself to that and that is going to make you feel like crap you could be fit but now you don't look fit or you don't feel like you're fit because what you see most of are these impossible photoshopped chemically enhanced whatever you want to call them bodies and that's what you're exposed to when in reality if you shut that off and you just walked around the real world You'd be like, oh, this is what people look like, you know, but your brain doesn't know that it becomes a subconscious thing. So, and it's funny that you said that because, um, I'm, in fact, I just tweeted this this morning, which is if you're easily offended, you are easily manipulated. That mm-hmm. is how the, the way you manipulate people, this is through marketing manipulation. This is through political manipulation. This is through just manipulation in general is through strong emotion. So if you feel a strong, and marketers know this, if they can make you, they call it what, pain points, right? They can make you angry, sad, whatever, right? They can, they can invoke emotion in you, then they can get you to buy their product. So consider that, uh, that if you are consuming stuff that is invoking these types of emotions, you are now in a state that, that, that makes you far more likely to manipul- be manipulated. And the worst part of this is, you are not aware. This is what you have to tell yourself is if you're being manipulated, you're, you're not aware of it. And you have to assume that you are assume that. And I, I remember catching myself mm-hmm. on some of these uh, political pages myself where they would take something and share it 
to make the other side look so crazy. Yeah. And then realize that that is like, they are searching for the craziest thing that they could find. To evoke an emotion out of you. Yes. Yes. And then I'm like, wait a minute. That's not like most people don't feel yeah. that way. Like that's, that's, that's not what's super manipulative. What's really going on. Yeah. They did a study on that and they found that social media posts or whatever, these pages don't change anybody's minds politically, but they do, they do make people less tolerant and more likely to hate other views. That's yep. what they do. They don't make you think differently. They make you hate more. Yeah. And that's the big problem. So I think that what you said is a, is a big deal. Do you Stop think, long. do you think that, um, cause I, I, I feel like I'm starting to hear this message more consistently, uh, in, from people. Uh, do you think that the, the cat's already out of the bag or the toothpaste is already out of the tube? It's too late that people are already crazy, like so addicted and it's going in that direction that we're, we're not going to swing back. Or do you feel like more and more people are becoming aware of how toxic social media can be mm. and, and, and the behaviors that come from that and the thoughts and, and, and we're going to become more protective of, of our thoughts and our time? Or do you think it's too late? Do you think that- Is you think culture that, really going to shift? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, are we, are, are, in, are we in the well, there's micro middle of that right now or are we still on the, the end of it? That's go a good question because there's micro level and the macro level. Yeah. Um, and- Social media is new, but what social media represents is not new. What that used to be was a mob mentality. Mm -hmm. So before social media existed, it was crowds. People, this is fascinating, by the way, if you ever want to like blow your mind, read about the behaviors of humans in crowds versus uh, on their own. What's the name of that study? It's a famous study. I, I don't know That's about the one You're talking about study. the one where like uh, the dancing one, right? Where the, That's just one example. There's a lot of studies on this. Yeah, but I thought there was a name for that. I thought there, there's a name for that, Doug? I'm not sure. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's a there's a there's a study where they like show like somebody who's like dancing all by themselves, and then how. They, they, oh, then I know you, what you're talking. about. And then about. you put like a group, or the or the other example is the 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 doctor's office where yeah. everybody looks away. Yeah, and and the, and the mm. elevator, everybody yeah. turns a certain mm. way. Like yeah, there's, yeah. there's people I've, start following. But there's along. a name for that study. I thought. I, yeah, I, I think you're. Right. I'll look yeah, for it. Yeah, but anyway, but. nonetheless, it's like um, people who would never damage property mm -hmm. on their own in mobs all of a sudden become hyper, you know, violent people who would never hurt people or mm -hmm. hit people or say things all of a sudden do so because of the mob. So there's this collective psychological phenomena, collective mental illness that happens with mobs and what social media is, is an extension of it. So why am I saying this? If you want to know, are we going to get better or worse? Just look at history and we tend to go up and down but over the over history, over the uh, period of time, it seems like we trend better. Like it seems like we figured things out. Like the way people acted 150 years ago in many ways mm -hmm. would seem atrocious today in some ways. So we tend to get better. But within that macro are these micro cycles of shit going crazy. Like what what did people think? What are they doing? So I, I, I totally so. subscribe to that. And I do think, and I've always said that, that I, you know, the pendulum just swings back and forth. And I think that overall we will get better. So that's the part I'm most curious about is where in the cycle are we? Mm. Are, are, are we still on the, the hockey stick bottom uh, spiking up of craziness with social media? Or if we, are we reaching the top and we're peaking and now potentially coming back the other end? Like mm. where, mm. if you guys had to guess, I mean, I guess one of the ways to look at it, maybe Andrew Doug could look it up is like, uh, growth of TikTok, Instagram, and face and YouTube and Facebook use. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but is it being a, replaced by something else? And well, I, you, I don't know. Like, I, well, what I would look of at, of course, it's being replaced with something else. Well, what I mean is, I would look at not necessarily social media, but um, mental illness. Uh, is it on the rise? Well, or no, is that's a, that, now you're correlating those without. That's not, and not a better. A better indicator would just be purely: are more people spending more time on those platforms? Right, is but it, my but my point with what what I said with mental illness is. Okay, let's say 50% uh, drop in social media use, but people are acting crazier and worse. It doesn't matter. So my point with that is what matters is, is, is human behavior and what's happening with us. And that's the trend that I would look at. Social media just represents yeah, but I don't, yeah, but new Sal, technology. That's not, that's not fair either because uh, the people could be depressed and acting out and doing those things because of other factors. That's not You can't just all of a sudden say, oh, suicide's up, therefore it's related to social media. No. Do I think that's a big indicator? Yes, I do. I, I think a, the much, a much more clear way to look at it is just purely, are we spending 
more time on these platforms. Yeah, but you're putting yesterday. more weight on. I mean, you're putting all the weight on social media. I, I mean, I think that it, it, it plays a role. Um, That's and the we point can, of the argument, though. Yeah, I do think it plays a role. But what's the what's the role that it plays? How much of a role is it going to play? And that's what I'm trying to say is like, what do we look at? Okay, social media use is down. Are we noticing positive or negative effects or no effects? I think that I don't know. That's a good question. I oh, have no I, idea. so that's my point is that I think that the consensus is that social media has is a powerful tool. Lots of people have made businesses money off yeah. it. But I feel like the the and I could be wrong. The majority are becoming more aware of the the negative ramifications of becoming addicted yeah. to it, using it all the time, and, and realizing so, it's been weaponized. Yeah, and so therefore, because that's becoming a bigger conversation are people self-regulating and starting to spend less time. So along those lines, here's what I think is blows my mind is that we do know that we're being manipulated. We do know that social media is not, you know, what they say it is. We're mm -hmm. figuring it out now. And here's the crazy part. We still don't care. People don't I, care. That's, that's, that's why I'm like at a loss because like, I want to think that there's a good high majority of people that are realizing how far we've gotten in terms of like uh, really just being manipulated in general just by following, um, you know, these pages and like these algorithms that like, you know, get you to feel a certain feeling and, and you know, like it's it's reading human behavior at a level that I think is it's never been done before. And, you know, also to finding out that there's government agencies <laughs> that have been involved with the manipulation. That's exactly what I was thinking right now. Yeah, and nobody cares. And nobody cares. Nobody's upset. Nobody's out on the streets. Like you fucked with us. Like yeah. nobody's saying that. Bro, like, the FBI paid Twitter millions of dollars to censor People that they told to censor, people who talked about. Bro, if we didn't care about JFK, what makes you think you were going to care? Bro, that, like, that news was like crazy. the apathy like that, level that's is, wild. is insane to me. That just recently like, came like, out. Right? Like, like Twitter manipulation is is one thing, but if you don't care about the the FBI, CIA being involved with JFK's murder, and the proof is now there. Yeah, and we're not like in a like the CIA again, basically. And again, I do, and I'm that's like, that's I try crazier. not to be all conspiracy guy all the time, but like. There's been literal psyops. There's there's ways they've they've like manipulated governments and elections elsewhere. It's like why did you think that they, that couldn't happen here? Like why are people so naive? Well, I think a lot of people did think that, but they were labeled conspiracy theory. In fact, isn't that where conspiracy theory they got invented from J from, from JFK, JFK? Right? Yeah. The irony of that. Uh, the, CIA, right. the, CIA, <laughs> the CIA created the term. To make people who questioned what happened sound crazy. Right, to get rid of skeptics. Them, right? Skepticism is evil. You know, it's funny. So, so the CIA was created uh, because of the Cold War, and they cre and we created a monster. It operates outside of the confines of the Constitution. They is get that money. what it was created? It was created to because of the threat of thermonuclear war. And what we did is we created a oh, monster. I was, I, was, I was under the impression it was older than that. I didn't know that. No, find out. No, you can look up, you know, but no, it, no it, it was- history. It basically operates outside of the government. It operates, and their 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 intended goal is to protect. It's supposed to, right? Supposed to. <laughs> so they do all kinds of shit that, like the stuff that we know about, is wild, bro. Right. You guys, you guys know Operation Northwoods. Yeah, yeah. I've told you guys about that. Yeah, you. Well, the, just the accounting was it the Pentagon, like how many billions of dollars were unaccounted for? Yes, yeah, nineteen forty seven. So you're looking at the end of World War Two. We had. Uh, you know, nuclear superpowers. Uh, the Soviets obviously, you know, figured out how to make nukes and it was a, this big arms race or whatever. So basically their job was, hey, let's prevent us from getting vaporized. But the Soviet Union fell and the CAA is not going anywhere. It's a, it's a monster. It's not going anywhere. And um, it's wild, bro. The FBI, do you know how much the FBI was used by the government to fuck with people? Uh, uh, Martin Luther King, yeah. And other celebrities. Like, this is all confirmed, by the way. So none of this is like, you know, yeah. hearsay. This is all like stuff that they've said yes. This is, this, you know, I think it was the FBI. Didn't they lose a case? I think it was the, the family of, of, of uh, Martin Luther King sued, maybe look this up, Doug, sued the FBI and won. Because mm -hmm. the FBI was found at fault so, okay, for killing. So back to <laughs> yeah. why we why why do we not care enough, including myself? Why do why is it because we've been conditioned to believe that uh, oh well, the you know if the government did something crazy like that, it was probably for our best. 
Yeah. Is that what? Is that why? No. Is it, why? Why is that not freaking everybody out or getting Bro, everybody so this is, angry? This is human behavior. The, the Romans knew this. Okay, so, what dissonance. Part, so yeah, what part of human behavior is this? You, what, if you, you you entertain them, what do they call it? Oh, uh, that's like the God, what, did, what is it? Uh, I saw a clip actually on that. Like kind of someone was oh comparing bread and cir in, circuses in, and bread. Yeah, circus and bread. Yeah, keep them fed and, and keep entertained. them entertained. Yeah, and nobody gives a nobody shit. Nobody cares. Though. So like, oh my god, all this crazy stuff happening, and you're like, eh, you know, I'm eh. cool. I'm making money. I yeah, guess it's I'm wild. Right. It's wild when you you think of it like that because you see the amount of attention and money like sports garners. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you talk about. I mean, we just had the World Cup, and you you talk about you know World Series and Super Bowls and the amount of sports that we consume. Like how much. Well, that was why the tension was so high during COVID. It's like we're locked down. All this, we, they got rid of sports. Like they got rid. Of, like they they weren't making movies. Like <laughs> yeah. people were just like ah, yeah. you know, like prime to <laughs> true. go to the streets and fuck shit up. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that, that is that is totally true, dude. And every cause that was out there was a leaderless cause or or their leaders were totally manipulated everybody stole everybody's money like everybody had good intentions going into a lot of these ma major causes that got them upset uh but then completely you know if you look at what happened as a result like they got totally manipulated okay so why we're on the, the conversation of weird human behavior that we can't wrap our brains around here's another one i can't wrap my brain around only fans <laughs> <laughs> now, hear me out here. The hear biggest me, winner out of the last few years. Hear me out. Yeah. Yes, exactly. One of the like the the amount of money that they're making Bro, is crazy. I, 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 when you so and this is the part that's interesting to me. When you see uh what the access that you have on Pornhub, okay, you basically have free unlimited porn at your fingertips. Right. Any, anybody can have that. You also have social media where now, you know, uh the opposite sex can be half naked uh, yeah. and and still get away with it. So what is it? What's the allure of it? Yeah. Yes. What is it that makes me pay eight ninety nine a month to have access to this this individual that's sharing basically? Maybe because you feel like it's personal. It has to be. Yeah, that, it has right? to be a personal level. Is that what it is? It has that's to be the only I, answer. I. Uh, uh, it's so funny when people you know talk about like, oh, men do this, men do that, and I'm always like, wah, wah, wah. here's the one thing that embarrasses the shit out of me because you know it's dudes <laughs> that are paying for this weird. Like, what are you doing? They're, they're man? paying for fart jars and and, and foot fetishes. How big of a le like a loser do you have to be? I I just there was this one girl. Who, there was this article written about this one girl. Men would pay her on OnlyFans. You ready for this? This is what she would do to get paid. Act dead. What? She would, they, put the camera on and then lay down and they pay her to do that. Yeah. I, I know you're all shocked. I, but this I, is I, I mean, it's I know like, somebody who, who makes, uh, well, let's flag that guy. her husband, uh, takes photos of her feet and it's just all her feet and people pay only fans a monthly fee <laughs> just to see her feet. So you what, know, like, like Quentin, Terrence, but I mean, you know? what's, yeah. what's so weird about that? Okay. She's not building a relationship with those people. She's not even communicating really with those people. And you could Google feet and get millions of feet to look at. Yeah. Why do I pay eight ninety nine to see her Maybe feet when I don't have a relationship with her? Yeah, but is she saying something back? Like, no. Oh, thank you for the money. <laughs> She's or... doing Morse code with like each doo -doo -doo -doo. with her toes. Yeah. What, like, yeah. What, 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 I, no I, that's what I. This is the part that I don't understand. Like cereal and, with her toes. And, and, and by how, the way, how I, many of how many of these people really do believe that they're they're getting that access I, who was it we were talking to or we overheard an interview of somebody who has a massive only fans page and they have an assistant who um it was it was a girl who says she hired a gay assistant who he just sits on there and answers and communicates to all the people and it's not even it's not even, it's not her. even really her really yeah, it's not even really yeah. her and people still pay people are and like i guarantee her membership didn't fall off after she came out and said that so what the fuck uh, yeah, I I don't get it. I, it's it's strange. There's it's, a lot of uh, a lot of losers. I mean, there. it's really. It's, see, I, I also don't get feet. By the way, that's a weird one to me. Feet are gross. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are you doing? You'd, anyway, you'd preach to the choir. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand that. <laughs> 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 I never understood that. By the way. Has someone ever broke that down? I don't know if I've ever heard anyone break that down. It's but a common the same guy that likes. There's got to be a reason for it though, right? It's a common fetish. Is feet? Do you not? Why? Think, so do you don't think it don't shows? It, it it has something to do with like your evolutionary theories? Like it's I can't like, figure like it a sign out. of help. Imprint. Like someone who has like really good looking feet that are well taken care of. Mm. No, like, because healthy feet, evolutionarily speaking. Look, the toes are spread out. You got a thick pad oh, yeah. underneath. Like those yeah, aren't they the look feet gnarly. Money. They're all muscular and like. <laughs> yeah, those are like evolutionarily speaking. If you saw in in nature, if this was a thousand years ago, and you saw a girl with like 
cute little like whatever type of feet you'd be like oh something's wrong with that girl yeah, what's wrong with her feet she's mm. not gonna last long yeah <laughs> she's gonna, she can't even walk a mile what do you find over there doug yeah i'm researching this only fans thing it said many said the basis for subscribing was to support the creators and avoid the exploitative side effect of the porn industry bullshit <laughs> oh, oh, they're all God. good samaritans what, oh, what, God. one so user virtuous. wrote oh, i want my money to go guys. to hot w women not sleazy porn producers sleazy free porn range producers. Farm to table organic fair trade porn, said another. I don't think a lot of people realize how unethical and ex exploitative free porn Dude, can so be. How much so, do you, so, how much so you have to lie to yourself? These, these guys are saints. Exploiting them? How much do you have to lie to yourself? Like, think about the, the, the cognitive dissonance that these people are. Why do you pay for this? Because I like supporting good people and I hate the porn industry. It's I love terrible. The independent, you know. I mean, at what point, what point pure, do you consider it? Do I consider what? OnlyFans. What do you mean? Like what? What has oh, to happen? What? Like when are you going to? What has go to happen for me to so, go on there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, okay, and feet. Just your feet, bro. Put my feet on there. Why not? My family's starving. Okay, has to be like that. Like, like I'm like looking at my kids, and they're like, but they're already eat, starving. They're almost dead. Years. Or are you like, okay, you've lost I mean, everything. You the bank account's drained. Bro, like I am, I am, that. I am doing all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, before dude, like I chopping wood and uh, you know, <laughs> chopping do, wood. doing regular shit. I'm prize fighting. <laughs> yeah, like, I can dude. think of a million different things <laughs> I can do. <laughs> dude, would it take that much? Nobody for you, wants Doug? to look at my feet to begin with. Yeah, uh, probably. Really. <laughs> I feel yeah. like you would have well manicured, taking care of feet, and that would be a pretty easy uh, moneymaker for you. What the hell? Well, it really depends on the dollar amount, Adam. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. You, I mean, you could probably convince me okay. if it's uh, pretty I feel, like, hefty. I feel like I could close you. It's like so <laughs> it's so weird. What is you do like a dual Odd, foot man. thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, we, whatever. We, whatever. We, I'll oil we, them up. We whatever tangle our toes together. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's Justin. That's that? Justin's oh, thing. Oh, no. On rose that's petals. disgusting. <laughs> hey, the price is right. In. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> toe tug of wars. Just, yeah. Isn't it? But it, it, isn't that really just interesting? Though? I, I find yeah. that really fascinating that, that you <laughs> have access to all of this. And by the way, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a large percentage of I the thought, guys paying that don't have a lot of extra disposable it's, income. It's either. really weird, right? I would have thought it would have destroyed the pay for part of that market. Cause when we were kids, I've said this before, but it's true. Like in the early nineties, if you were 13, 14 years old and you had a dirty magazine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, you could, you could, you you could get a kid to give you his bike for it. That's how hard He's gold. That's how hard it was to come by stuff like that. I can't believe in today's market where it's flooded with like anything for right. free that anybody would even pay. Yeah. That's really crazy to me. Yeah. There has to be some really unique quality to it. Yeah. I don't it, think so. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't understand. It ha that's, that would be the only allure I would think. You know, I think somebody has a weird I, Honest to God, I swear to God, I think, because what Doug read is Dude, my favorite one. Well, though, here's another thing. It says the main draw of OnlyFans is the personalized one-to-one yes. -one interaction. That's it. It's yeah. fake relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what this is a sign of? How fucking lonely people are right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. People are so damn lonely that they're paying people to just pretend to talk to them or to like them. That's how, that's what's going on right now. I'll be honest though. Like if I had to do it, like I want to be the one that like shames people, dude. But <laughs> you would be the only you family talk shit. Do you dirty piece of shit. Oh, you want to be yeah. that one. That's a thing. <laughs> Nobody. That's a thing. What's it? What's it? What's that called? It's called yeah. some, it's like, we're like, there's guys that pay for girls to like talk. Yeah. Talk they just down like talk about you're how a piece small of shit. Or you're a loser. Like, oh yeah. You're just pathetic. And uh, and the guy's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> it's like, I feel so bad. Justin's like, I could do that. I could do that. I could yeah, do that. Oh, that's I, you, I feel so you're bad. Terrible. I, Adam would do the flexing stuff for sure. Oil. Oil. By the mm. way, I passed on it. I had that opportunity. That muscle worship dancer, thing was something you know? that I got offered. I didn't I did do it. It was too weird. Was too no, weird. no. Yeah. It wasn't too weird. I don't, you it know, wasn't I, enough money. I, I, I tell you, you're right. It's not enough money. That's right. It was just, <laughs> I'm with Doug. If it was the right, right money, I'm like, ah, oh, it's a little bit of flexing, a little bit of a toe, you know, toe playing with Doug. I, I can know, do that for you know, the right I flex price. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, might as well, who cares? Yeah, Put yeah. the camera on. Yeah, yeah. This the, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. It's sad. Charge it's because it. it's people are lonely, dude. That's sad. That what are the hard. stats? So I heard that the other Loneliness day. has exploded. Like bad. Exploded. It so so bad. interesting, too, in, in a time where we have the ability to stay connected and be connected to people uh, in a virtual sense. 
uh, better than we ever it's fake did. Connection. You know what it reminds I, me. I of? mean, I think that's I think that's part of it, right? Is that I think we're fooled into thinking yes. that we're 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 more connected than we ever been. And oh, I talk to my friends more than my my dad talked to his friends. Like I'm better connected when in reality, well, one real visit in person for an hour is. Mm-hmm. I would I would that'd be interesting to see the, the comparison on that on a on a, a like what the how how that plays. They both into. produce dopamine, but. Only real connection or personal, like like when we're physically seeing each other, produces the oxytocin. So you're getting mm. half of the effect. So think about it this way. I actually heard, I was listening to, I don't remember who was saying this. The human especially man. touch, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's definitely. So this was brilliant. I actually, I actually thought this was really smart. Think about like you were, when you were a teenager, right? You're 15 years old, 16 years old. Even, I forget, as an adult, it takes energy to get off the couch put on some clothes, you know, look presentable, go out, put yourself out there, meet people. It's really vulnerable because they're in front of you, right? So, but what drives you to do that? Well, they're bored. There's nothing to do at home, right? So if you're a kid and you're like, part of that is like sexual drive. Well, if you're a a young man, you've got the sexual drive and there's really not, it'll drive you to go out and meet people and talk to people. But if you're at home on your computer, watching pornography, playing video games, talking to people, you might not, it, it takes away that drive to do the thing that you actually need to do. And so people are, it's literally, it's like when we introduce processed food into our diets. Yeah, we're eating, but wow, we're, un, we're less healthy. Doug pulled up a chart. So first of all, explain the chart. So it's like, okay, so the two, basically they broke it up in two categories. How often you feel lonely, often, always, some of the times or hardly never. And it looks like more people would claim to feel lonely 50% of the time or more? Is that what Well, this re- is Brazil. Oh, so you're on Brazil. Brazil is the, uh, at the top of the chart. As far as lonely. As far as and lonely. And who's the best? Well, if Not you go lonely. down the chart, and I don't think we have all countries, the Netherlands is way down there. So like 15% are feeling like I often feel lonely. And what's the, is, aren't, isn't the Netherlands like a socialist? Aren't they Aren't they all like community driven? Like what, what's their- No, they're very free market. But, I, but Are they, they free they market? Do, yeah. Oh, Netherlands, yeah, I right. don't know that. Don't they know. are, um, uh, they, their culture definitely encourages uh, social interaction. There's a lot of trust. Yeah. In this I mean, that's what, well, that's the sign, right? I mean, Brazil like gets super sunny, you know, like it, it carnival. Like, I wonder what why it, they're so lonely. Yeah, what shifted? I mean, is that a massive shift as of late? Because that it seems like like the more um, countries that get less sun and like, well, look, I'll tell you something right now. Along those lines, uh, children, so adolescents and teenagers, the depression, anxiety, drug abuse, and suicide rate has been going up steadily since the. 2012, 2013, it's been rising. The pandemic, it dramatically accelerated, okay, to the point where this is like alarm bells are going off. In fact, I have a friend that's a therapist, and he told me when the after during the pandemic and after, he's like, we have wait lists. He goes, it's crazy. What yeah. happened? We isolated kids from each other. We kept them from going to school, mm-hmm. speech problems, uh, social interaction problems. And then what happens is, and Arthur Brooks talks about this with happiness, when you're feeling anxious, depressed, and lonely, what you want to do is not go around anyone, not talk to anyone. He goes, you have to do the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's created this negative feedback loop. Like depression and, and su- you know suicide in kids was almost non-existent. Now you're seeing like 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds like commit suicide and shit. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy what's what's ended up happening. It's all because of loneliness. Yeah, it'd be really neat to see who's dug into this because that's a that that's a big difference. But Japan and Netherlands compared to say uh, Brazil and some of the other ones that where it looks like America's kind of where's in the, the U.S. middle top. Yeah, the U.S. is in the middle. We have about thirty one percent reporting that they're often, always, or sometimes lonely. I bet we're you, actually not as. I mean, we're bad, but we're not as bad as some like Brazil. That's really bad. I bet you. Yeah. I bet you. If you look at statistics of people that have a spiritual practice, I bet the loneliness is far less. And not because of the, the, the God aspect, but you can argue that if that's what you believe. I think it's because weekly they meet up in person with lots of other people. And that, so in other words, today in modern times, in order to be fit and healthy, you have to schedule movement because daily life does not, is not conducive to it. I believe that today and moving forward, if you want to avoid loneliness, you're going to have to structure it because it ain't going to happen naturally. More people work from home. And when they do go to work, they're in their cubicles on their computers, not really working together. 
Um, people are ordering groceries to their house. People are not going to the store. They're ordering, you know, everything's coming to their house. So I feel like you're going to have to figure out a practice where you're with people. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to suffer. You got to immerse yourself again. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to suffer from some of the stuff. And that takes some work because it's, uh, you know, it can make yeah, you anxious or part. awkward or, you know, or whatever. Oh. Anyway, really crazy. All right. I'm going to pull up some, some funny ads from the past. We're going to change the tone here. Why don't you talk bit. about one of our partners first? Oh, we, uh, we are supposed to talk about uh, Organifi. Still getting great reviews for peak power still getting super great so i've now seen i've now seen over a dozen uh personal so these are per, these are people who are dming me over a dozen uh people have, have dm me and said that they've replaced their pre-workout with peak power because it makes them they don't get the crash they don't feel the crappiness and they they use less caffeine and get the same driving effect i knew it was going to do well as soon as i saw the forum the forum are like the most critical fans we have. They're the first <laughs> they, ones to tell us something. They so. are. They are the first to, <laughs> to shit on something if they don't like it or to, or know. something about the show they don't like or a product or whatever like that. So uh, I've seen uh, nothing but positive stuff come out of there. Yeah. So that's a, that's a really good sign because yeah, they, they are definitely critical. For so, sure. so here's some ads from a long time ago, which I think is pretty funny. So this first one Doug pulled up. This is a... Uh, Toothache drops with cocaine. A little kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Give your kid instantaneous uh, cure. Tooth hurt. Yeah. Here's some cocaine. There and then there's uh, that, that, and these are these are real. Those so? are real ads from a lot, you know, from a while ago, obviously. So that one I believe was uh, at the turn of the century. Uh, well, last the century before the last one. Mm. Uh, all right. Here's one. So this shows you just how different. <laughs> Can you shrink that? <laughs> this what? shows you how weird things have gotten. Uh, this is an old ad a for a other way. A you could you could categorize it as a supplement oh, there you go. for adults and for children. And the ad says <laughs> it makes children and adults as fat as pigs. What? Now you would think, why the hell would they advertise what? that? Yeah, because back then. People, people, food was hard to come by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. wanted your sign of wealth, famine. Yeah, yeah. and you're like, I, you, oh, I'm going to give my kid this so we could fatten him up. Pretty crazy, right? And then here's a good one right here. This is a table pad to prevent your pat your table from getting burned. Maybe do you think that was the? Do you think that was the original? Do you think that was the original driver of Perfect. the uh, obesity rise? Do you think that the original driver was we had we went from this transition transition from food being really scarce great and it being a sign of wealth and prosperity to be fat. And during that transition, when more and more people had access to us, access to it, there was this rush to go consume and eat as much so you, hoard as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, so you felt wealthy and prosperous. Do you think that I was like? No, nah, I think because then, then the times changed, and then and then uh, because know. we didn't have as back then when that when that transition happened, we didn't have like super highly processed foods. It was the processed foods that did it. Yeah, people, people, it, it was convenient. Uh, it's high. I mean, that's what sent it over the top. But yeah. we were it was on the rise even back then, though. No. Um, before, if you go in the fifties and sixties, when we were becoming much more prosperous as, uh, um, obesity was not common. It wasn't that common. It wasn't, it didn't exist in children. That's for sure. You know yeah. what? I, I, I wanted to ask you about a tweet you did that I, I saw somebody clap back at you and I didn't see you respond. And I wanted to ask you because I probably you made a him. comment about something about what's happened. Uh, and I think it was around either loneliness or depression or something like that it, it, since COVID and somebody made a smart ass remark back to you that oh you mean back to uh, where it was in 2018 or yeah. something? Did you see that? Yeah. So remind me what which one it was. So I, I, I can't remember specifically. I'm going but to your, I said thing. I'm going to your like, thing right now. Like how we really messed up kids because we were adults didn't act like adults. We were because uh, right. you know, adults are supposed to be we're supposed Stoic. to be courageous. Yeah. We're supposed to make the right decisions. And what ended up happening is we allowed our fear to dictate policies that hurt our kids. We so allowed much. hysteria to completely take over the landscape. It, 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 and, and it didn't make sense. Like for example- no. Oh, right here, here it is, Sal. So you said, it's no coincidence that teenage suicide, yeah. depression, anxiety, and mental illness have exploded over the last few years at rates we've never seen before. The cowardly policies and actions we forced upon children during the pandemic caused this, shame on us. And then someone said, by exploited, do you mean it's still less than in 2018? Weird. Stupid. So that's wrong, first of all. And what it is, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So you know what's weird? When people make comments like that, I'll go and look at their profile. And whoever that was has like one follower. And I'm like, oh, this is not a real account. Yeah, right. And now that we know, now with these Twitter files, I think that they're designed to counter. Oh, you're right. This was somebody. Yeah, fake. This person has zero followers and they're following only you. Yep. It's fake. It's wow. a fake account. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's no, a, it's not. It's a bot. It's not weird. We know exactly what yeah. they're doing. 
So what they do is they try it's to counter information. Correct, hundred percent. So that sounds like a good point. Somebody who's not going to go read up on wow, it. Wow, that's be like, so oh. wild because I was actually I saw that wow. and I thought oh, that's really interesting that Sal didn't freaking. No, I looked at them and I saw that they were fake. Wow. Uh huh. So what, what dude? It, that is so wild. Because if you if you don't take the time to educate yourself and whatever, you'll read that and be like, oh well, it's not worse than it wasn't before the pandemic. False. Yeah. False. Yeah. Not true. The pandemic. <laughs> The policies that we enacted during the pandemic with children, keeping them out of school, forcing young children to wear masks, which is completely useless because there's a protocol to using a mask and a five-year-old is not going to do that. So it's right. a total waste of time. Yep. Those two things alone, isolating them from each other and from whatever, the fear that was implicit in how we were behaving. It's a visible distrust it, is what they created, we created of everybody. We damaged our children so badly because yeah. of our own cowardly 100%. fear because we were just spineless. People, adults were just spineless. Oh no. We, when we knew for a fact within six months, yeah. this is not a disease that really hurts children. And also, you know, anybody who made the point was like, wait, we're making five-year-olds wear masks. Like, don't they touch their faces and take them off? It's like, isn't that a waste of time? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Makes us feel better. Makes us feel safe, whatever. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And we really hurt these kids. And if you think about it, if you were seven, when this all went down, you were nine when it went, was over. That's two years of your young life. That's a lot. That's a big chunk of your life. To think that we didn't traumatize children with this crap is 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 insane. I'm over yeah. here still tripping out that there's this this looks like a real account that only has one follower that yeah. actually followed you and just to counter what you're saying. That's so crazy. To They're me. there specifically disinformation, misinformation. Correct. I mean, those are those are those are definite tools uh, at their disposal that they used. I mean, I had no idea that, right? So it's kind of wild that you we talk about this or yeah. you say- It's coming from all the, um, you know, the, the you know the, the fact checkers out there. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's all wrapped into the same thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a big- Pure manipulation. It's a big propaganda machine. And uh, it sucks because you're put in a weird position, which is also bad, where- if people start thinking that they can't trust anyone, that's also a very bad place to be. Yep. Very bad place to be. So I don't know what the answer is, you know, to all that. But yeah, that's why I didn't comment. Because I now I look. And if I see you got no followers and you're just following me or you just created your account. See, I almost I'm feel like, like I still, I, see, I feel like you should almost say that. Like you should start that going yeah. forward. Thanks, for the robot. I just block yeah. them. Yeah, well, yeah, but it, yeah, but nobody else. Because here I here I am. Okay? Yeah, you're right. I should say something. And I we're really close. I, I actually thought I'm surprised Sal didn't put him in his place. Yeah. And I didn't know why you didn't put him in his place. That's why I wanted to bring it up. I didn't go as far to go. Oh, let me see how the picture looks like a legitimate dude. It doesn't because sometimes like the the bot ones are obvious to me, and the, obviously they're getting. Uh, Bro, they're really good. Yeah, they're getting better about this because the you could in the past I feel like oh right away you see a, a fa no picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's like a, it has a real guy's face, which I'm sh obviously it's probably not that person, but I don't know that, and I just see a comment like that and go oh wow, I wonder why Sal didn't, and then I click on it, and I'm like oh shit, this dude is literally only following one person, you, yep. and zero followers. Yeah, I know. I what? Know. I know. Dude, what? I, yeah, who's to say? I mean, Chat GPT like feels like it came out of nowhere. But who's to say that hasn't just been like tested? So in, I mean, what is regard. so is that like software that somebody has created that a lot that like just yeah, automatically yeah. creates the profile or automatically? I think what they do is they pick up on I, I it's case. words and it's yeah, it's sentences and phrases. Yes, yeah, yeah. so, and what they'll do is they'll post a comment underneath that is a very effective like that's effective. Like if you didn't know any better and you read what I wrote, it's so effective. And, I know better, and I still almost got yeah and bamboozled. What did, it, what did it make you think? Oh well. Yeah, it's bad, but it's not as bad as it was before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So you immediately like discredit what I said. Yep. Oh, that's fake. It undermines it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, They're luckily I knew better, and that's why I didn't understand why you didn't. So you got to say something. You got to be like, oh, another bot or some. You have to give some sort of. So a, I, I, you're right. Even if it's a snide comment you're or right. something. You know how I started doing this, by the way. I had followers who would do that for me. So I went. So when I first started, like, oh, I'm going to start focusing on Twitter. So after I got kicked off of Instagram, which, by the way, I'm more and more proud about every single day when we figure out more of this information because I was obviously annoying the right people. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. as I was on there, I would go back and forth with people and then people who've been on Twitter for a while go, Sal, this is not a real account. Yeah, you're, talking you're wasting your time. This is not so then I started to look and I go, oh shit, this is bullshit. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I have somebody for you guys today, uh, somebody who's, it's not like, I normally I like to bring somebody who is uh, underground or you don't really know who they are and, and, and enlighten someone. But um, Rob Deerdick, 
if you don't follow Rob Deerdick, I, I think he's a great follow. And if I had to choose one, you know, ultra wealthy, famous person who I think um, lives their life as far as the way they are uh, with their time and money and family. He seems pretty grounded too. Very much so. Yeah. And I think closely aligns with all of us. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, it's interesting about that is I've come to realize that the more of his content that I've consumed, but I remember, and I don't know what year this is, Doug, check me the year because I'm curious how old I was. When I, I was watching Robin Big. Robin Big was a favorite show. I remember show, that. Favorite show of mine. And I don't know how old I was when, it, when the first Please season came out. Please don't tell me it's 20 years old. 2006. <laughs> Three seasons. Yeah. So, how old are we? <laughs> yeah, so that, how's, we're in our teenage, te we're a teenager. Yeah. yeah, so we're teenagers at that point. Well, it's like 15 years ago. And I remember actually... No, I remember 2000. Yeah, what am I doing? 26. Do your math yeah, we're early 20s. Sorry. Early yes. 20s. Yes, early 20s. So it's easy for me because yeah, I was born in 1980. So I I remember watching that and going like, this is when when I when I become really wealthy, this is how I want to spend my money, or uh, I want to be like this. Mm -hmm. Like this, is how I remember thinking that. Yeah. And that was what drew me to that show was just like, here's this guy who has all this fame and success, but then yet he's still this big kid. He doesn't seem pretentious about his, yeah. his wealth and money. And it's like, and, and he's continued to, to prove me that way as he's gone on and become wealthier and more famous and more successful that I just think that the way he goes about it is, is really brilliant. The way he spends his time and looks at money and just looks at the his whole business life family balance i think he's good follow -up. yeah great follow great personal listener. and in particular i was just listening to his interview with ed milet so ed milet was actually interviewing rob on his show and he dropped a couple really good you know good good pieces of of, of info and in that that i thought was really valuable that I, i'll go back and even re-listen so check him out Z-Biotics is a great product that helps your body break down acetaldehyde. What's that? Well, that's one of the negative byproducts of drinking alcohol. So here's what you do. You drink Z-Biotics, then you enjoy your night drinking with your friends, and you feel way better the day after. Go check this company out. Check this product out. It is the only one in its category. It is uh, Nobody has this. It's a patent-pending product. Go check it out. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T. Uh, ICS.com forward slash mind pump, then use the code mind pump22 for 10% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Todd from Virginia. Todd, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys, doing great. How are you? Good. Good. Awesome. Um, so I'm wondering if you were starting out running the RGB bundle, how would you periodize mini bulks and mini cuts throughout it? to achieve some sort of body recomposition akin to what Adam did back in 2012, 2013. Um, would you focus more on cutting or bulking? Um, I know in the past you've said your programs aren't built specifically for uh, cutting or bulking specifically, but to achieve best results, like would you focus on bulking and phase one of anabolic, for instance? I'm just trying to get your thoughts on how to best achieve those. I, I think results. I think the way I would decide that would be kind of where I'm currently at, right? So if I'm if I'm maintaining myself in like the low teens or even like uh, nine ten percent body fat, then I'm I'm probably going to put a lot of energy towards still bulking because I know I can shred that down and you got room, yeah, and I could shred that down in like four weeks. Uh, if I was a much higher body fat percentage, say you know twenty twenty something percent or more. I might run a, a cut or I, you know, it also depends too, where's your, where your calorie intake is right now too. So I say I might run a cut first, a mini cut first, and then, and then go back to a mini bulk throughout the whole thing. But if you, if your calorie intake for your size is low, then I'm still going to bulk, uh, bulk first. So there's, there's some, there's some, there's some variables that I would want to figure out first before I, I decided how I would exactly do that. And by the way, there isn't necessarily a wrong or a right way in this situation. It's just more of a preference. Like if you come to me and you're like, yo, Adam, I'm, I'm 5'10", I'm almost 200 pounds and I'm 25% body fat. I'm going to run the RGB and I want to get shredded. How we start? Well, and, and then I go, okay, how many calories are you eating? You're like, oh, I'm eating somewhere between 1,800 to 2,200 calories. Uh, okay, let's really focus on building your metabolism first before we even consider cutting. So the bulk of the RGB is going to be focused on building up your metabolism, building muscle, and then we'll eventually shred down when we get to a calorie one. Now, let's say you're at a healthier calorie point. Let's say you're somewhere between 2,500, 2,700 calories. Well, 
we're in that range, then we tip, we could do a little mini cut or maybe just start with a, a short bulk, you know, and try and get maybe up to 28, 2900 calories and then run a little mini cut and then back to a mini bulk. So, I mean, we have a, we have a lot of uh -huh. options, but you I, you would want to consider all those things that I'm that I'm I'm saying on how I think how you would go about it. Todd, there's a couple things I'll address with this. One is that there's no workout program designed for cutting or bulking. There's workout programs designed for stamina, endurance, muscle building, maximal strength. The diet is really what determines the 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 fat loss or the or the gain, right? Or the muscle gain. So when people say this is the best cutting program, this is the best well, like that's all marketing. Yeah, bullshit. it's all marketing. So all of our programs are designed for a specific kind of physical performance type goal, whether it be strength or muscle or mobility or stamina then your calories essentially determine whether or not you're getting leaner or, or building. And again, the goal with, with cutting or building is always building. What I mean by that is when you're cutting, you still want to be able to try to build because that'll at least preserve the most muscle. Okay. So I'm going to simplify a little bit about what Adam said. If your goal is to cut, um, then you want to be in about a three or four to one ratio cut to bulk. What I mean by that is three or four weeks of a cut with one week of a slight bulk, okay? If your goal is to bulk, you can flip that, three or four to one bulk to cut. If your goal is to speed up your metabolism, then it's also like the bulk, about three three or four to one, where you, you're slowly bumping calories and you might do a cut for a week or even maybe four or five days. Does that make sense to you? It does, yeah. Okay, so, um, so now let's get specific with you, Todd, real quick. What's your body, do you know what your body fat percentage is at the, at the moment? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm in like the 18 to 20% range. Okay. Um, don't have a specific number drilled down, but right around there. And then what are your calories roughly? Uh, 25 to 2,700 calories okay. for maintenance. I go, I go three or four to one, uh, cut to bulk. So in other words, three weeks in a, uh, in a cut and then one week in a slight bulk and then repeat. So there's I, your mini cut, mini bulk, and I think you'd be okay with that. I totally agree with Sal. Now that I I'm, I see your numbers now, I see the 19 to 20%, I see the, the calories where you're at. So you're actually in a very similar place that I was when I started. Like you, you, you referenced my 2012 when I went on my transformation journey. I was at 20% body fat. I was probably around there calorie wise. We're obviously different in height and weight. We're a little bit different, but pretty similar place. And you know what I did was actually... I did not try and really move the scale. My goal was I wanted to just keep my weight right where it was, mm -hmm. slowly reduce body fat, slowly build muscle. And so I really didn't do any cutting. It was just tightening up the diet, eat, making better choices. And it was a and slow process. Yeah, it was very slow. It was just, I wasn't really trying, if anything, I was trying to add calories to the diet. So my goal was, can I continue to make good food choices, get to a place where I'm eating, like in your case, you know, 29, 3000 calories and not see the scale really go up or down. And I just did it over like a six month period. It was a, it was a very slow, um, but gradual process. And I really didn't do any major cuts until way later until I had built my calorie intake up. Now I wasn't quite as, quite as low as you are. I was probably, I think around 3000 when I first started, but I got it up all the way over 4,000 calories. And so then when I decided to go on more of an aggressive cut, it was really easy to lean out. So you could go that route too, where you're not really doing a, a three, a three week, uh, uh, cut to a one week bulk or vice versa. You just are consistent with making good food choices, slowly trying to add calories and following the RGB, because what's great is we do all the periodizing and the workouts there that you're going to, your body's going to have novelty and want to build and want to change. And so just by making good food choices and slowly eating more calories to support the training, you should lean out naturally while, while you do that. Yeah, here's two points with that that'll help. Uh, hit your protein targets. So I would aim for at least 170 grams of protein a day, and I would only eat whole natural foods. Those two things alone will make uh, take out a lot of the guesswork, I should say. You're less likely to overeat, and you're hitting your protein targets. And if you're working out appropriately and properly, which you probably are because you'll be following our programs, then you'll see like a, a, a slow change in body composition. Awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. If you, go, if you go the slow way, I will recommend this because it helped me. The, the mental side is the, the photographs every, like every week, right? So like first thing Friday morning fasted when I get up photo front side back. And really I, I needed that 
because when you're not doing a hard cut or you're not doing a major bulk, there's not major swings. It's a very slow, gradual process. And so I needed this kind of visual reminder of, yeah. oh yeah, I'm on the right track. I'm doing good. And I, and I really would only judge myself about every two weeks. Like, cause I took it every week, but I wouldn't correct myself. I wouldn't make adjustments to the training or the calories in, until I saw like a two week mark of like, okay, am I better th after these two weeks than I was two weeks ago? And as long as I could say yes, I stayed the course. And so I, I do highly, if you go the slower route of just, you know, slowly increasing calories and not really trying to cut hard and just doing what Sal said, whole foods, hit your protein intake, then my recommendation would be to use something like that, that you, cause you can be a little more objective about because seeing yourself every day in the mirror, it's easy to get in your own head and be like, oh, I'm not, I can't see anything changing. And it's like, well, sure you can. If you give yourself a little bit of a break of, 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 of looking at photos, then you, I think you can. Yeah, definitely fall into that trap. Yep. Um, quick follow up, real quick. After I'm done with RGB, I was planning on doing symmetry. Yep. Um, I've recently just uh, built my own home gym. Um, so squat rack, barbell, dumbbells. I don't have a cable machine. So in symmetry, is it possible to, rather than a cable machine, use uh, bands, for yep. instance? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hundred yep. percent. That's a great, yeah, great replacement. But symmetry is a lot of dumbbell work. So and barbell work at the very end. So you'll be, you'll be set. Did you say you had a pure oh. X rack? Um, no, it's a like Titan rack, I think. Okay. I was just yeah, going to well. recommend. They just got an attachment for a uh, cable. So, you know, that is an option now. Okay. Awesome. That attachment might still work even on his. It could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So look at it. Look, at pull up bar. look into well, it. I don't know because it's that bottom part. Um, I mean, it does. So, so it goes through the, the hole and it like locks in there. So it's at the bottom and then you have a pulley and then you kind of run it through. If you have a, a pull up bar, you kind of run it through the top. Um, but it, it might work. It might not work. Look into it. But yeah, it's just nice that they're kind of coming up with these extra accessories for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so, uh, Todd, do you have symmetry? I do. Yes. Yep. Okay, good. You're all set then. And what about prime and prime pro for correctional stuff? I have Maps Prime. I do not have Pro. All right. I want to send you something, so I'll send you Prime Pro. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Todd. All right, Todd. Right Thank you, guys. You got it. <clears throat> Man, you know, I really do blame our space for the, the just informing people wrong when it comes to workouts. Like, this is yeah. a cutting workout. This is a bulking workout. This is a... Well, they literally market it both together. Like, so it's... it's they're. they're they're trying to like push it as like this is the ultimate cutting uh, program yeah. where you're gonna get shredded and 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 they you know caddy the uh, nutrition right alongside. Yeah, that. it's it's um it's too bad. First off, work at working out is a terrible way to lose weight. It's just this is a fact. Studies will show that it's a terrible way to lose weight. But what you what you can do with working out is leverage the workouts so that the adaptations you you gain from the workouts make fat loss easier later on, and that's building muscle. So if anything, what you want to do is you want to always try to build muscle and which is what you want to do when you bulk, obviously, but also it's a great thing to do when you're trying to cut because the challenge with cutting is you lose muscle mm -hmm. and you don't want to lose muscle. You want to maintain your muscle. So at the very least, your metabolism doesn't adapt in such a negative way, but also because you look better and all that other stuff. So the workouts, think of workouts as like performance and physical goals, and then think of the diet as the way to lose or gain. And this is true for bulking as well as cutting. Yeah. I didn't realize that his his stuff was up there. I saw after the fact yeah. that it, we had his numbers up there because I would have given that probably orig the original advice. I would have, instead of giving him a mini, I, and he was referencing my mm. 2012 transformation. Yeah. Like, that's exactly how I did it was I, I wasn't trying to cut, you know, or, or really bulk. I mean, I guess you could say I was in a, a slight reverse diet. The goal was, can I keep my weight? about where I'm at, but recomp, right? Change my right. body fat percentage. And what that looks like is slowly adding calories uh, while I'm also increasing activity and strength training. And so it kind of negates the extra calories and then partitions over into building muscle. And so you slowly lose body fat, you slowly build muscle. You don't really see the scale, but boy, is that hard. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of discipline um, for somebody to do that, and everybody over overcorrects. <clears throat> yes, that's, that's the problem. You're trying to gain, you overcorrect by eating too more because all oh, the scale's not moving. You're yes. trying to lose, you overcorrect by eating too little. Yes, you got to be really patient. Yeah, and 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 trust the process <clears throat> and understand that within a week, uh, you are going to have these moments where you intake extra sodium or you eat a food that your body doesn't digest as well as some other foods. And then you, you have a little bloat, you have a little bit of water retention. 
and that visually like throws you off and may the scale also. So you might yeah. see a, a one pound or two pound jump on the scale. You might look puffy in the mirror and it's like, oh, fuck, I'm going the wrong way. And then you overcorrect and it's like, you got to just, you got to understand that's coming and you got to believe that you, 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 you got yourself lined up and then totally adjust in two weeks. Our next caller is Isaiah from California. What's up, Isaiah? How can we help you? Doing good. Thank you guys for having me on the show. You got excited to be here. Um, so I'm uh, 22 years old. Uh, I play baseball at Fresno Pacific University, and I've been working out for seven to eight years. I just got MAPS performance a while back. I'm on week five right now. And uh, so with that being said, so this is going to my question. Um, so I have baseball. Baseball starts in January, and we're going to be practicing – Monday through Saturdays, and then um, we, we practice for three hours, approximately like three to four hours a day mostly. Sundays are only our only day off. And then starting February, we have double headers Friday and Saturday. So we're out there for like 10 hours to 12 hours just doing, being out there all the time. Um, so with that being said, my question was, how would I program my workouts during season so that I can be in tip-top shape and what workouts should I do to be able to um, stay strong and stay healthy? Yeah, good question. Yeah, this used to be a harder question to answer, but uh, since we've created the program MAPS 15, I feel like this has solved a lot of issues in terms of like in-season training. And um, we talked to Corey Schlesinger and this kind of reaffirmed uh, what we had already kind of worked on in terms of like trying to incorporate something that was more focused on frequency and getting those muscles <laughs> stimulated, but less on the intensity and less on the volume, uh, which is something that I would scale now. You know, if I was to go to revisit and do in-season training with any of my athletes, like this is definitely the protocol I would send them. And being a baseball player and having like some of these more demanding, like double header type of uh, games, that's where like, you know, mobility is going to be a, a, your, your best friend priming and making sure that, uh, you know, your shoulder is, is accounted for and your hips um, and really making sure that you're reinforcing that with uh, mobility drills. So yeah, MAPS 15 and mobility. 100%. About the bottom line is when you're the training off season versus in season, way less volume, way less volume. So, you know, now you're doing three workouts a week, you're doing mobility sessions, like you go into season and what I, what Justin's talking about is like 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day of some basic uh, strength training. That's MAPS 15. And what that's going to do, it's going to help maintain some of the stuff you've built in the off season. You're not going to overtrain. And it'll prevent injury. Then when you get into the off season again, that's when you can focus on pushing your body. And I can't stress this enough, especially for someone your age, you have a lot of energy. You can get away with a lot. And the tendency is going to be to add more and more and more. You don't want to do that. What you don't want to do is push your body to its limit. You want to do the right amount that's going to give you the best results. And it's going to be a lot less in season than it is off season, less than you think. So like literally 15 minutes a day of strength training, uh, 15 to 20 minutes a day of strength training is probably going to be perfect Optimal. with the amount of practice and stuff uh, that you're doing. And then when he brought up MAPS Prime, that's that's what you're going to use in your warmups. So before you play, before you practice, in between you, games, that's yeah, it. For sure. And do the maps prime you, stuff. Okay. Would you say that the the fifteen minutes a day? Would I even do that on Friday and Saturday, the days I have games? On the double header days? No. Uh, no. Yeah. no. 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 Those are long days. Not on your not on your maximal like demanding yeah no. game days. Those are the days I would take off. That's, so we're gonna send you Mass Fifteen so you have that. Okay. So we're gonna. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. We're, that. we're gonna send that to you so you have that. And then uh, did we you, also Prime? You want to send them Prime too, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. Send them Prime also. So we send you Prime and Maps Fifteen so you have both of those. And so the, here's the trick. Okay. So I, I think you could follow Maps Fifteen the way it's pretty much laid out, but if you notice anything, any sort of decline in performance, if you notice any uh, soreness kind of lingering, you still got to scale back on that. And the way I would do that, since you already have map performance and or we're sending you prime, is I would I would drop a weight training day and focus on mobility uh, and or mm -hmm. priming on that day. So if you find like, let's say you go, it's uh, it's Tuesday 
and you're like, you know, you're supposed to do another MAPS 15 workout and you're like, God damn, I'm hella sore from yesterday. I actually would say, you know what, let's just focus on mobility today. We'll hit your MAPS 15. Just take it right out of performance, That's your mobility exactly. yeah, session. Mm -hmm. take, yeah, take one of those mobility days out of performance, insert it there instead of your MAPS 15, and then pick up MAPS 15 again the next day. So you got to really That's it. learn to listen to your body and, and see what it's telling you. And if you feel good, stick with the MAPS 15 every day. I mean, that, if you're feeling good, ride that. But if you feel like you're really sore heading into that, drop it and then put a mobility day there and said, and then that's, if I was coaching you one-on-one -on -one through this, this season, that's how we'd be communicating is you'd come in to see me. My plan would be to do mass 15 with you. But if you're like, God damn, Adam, I'm pretty sore from yesterday. I'd be like, you know what? We're going to focus on mobility today. Tomorrow we'll hit your maps 15. And that's kind of how I would do that. And when, when you say, so when you say about volume, um, are you talking like reps and weight or are you just talking like in general, just volume, how much I do it? All of it. All, so vo volume. So the, the formula for volume is sets, reps and weight, right? So you multiply how many sets you do, how many reps you do, how many weight that equals total volume. If you pull back on weight, you pull back on volume. If you pull back on sets, you pull back on volume. If you pull back on weight. So maps 15 reduces all of that, right? Cause you're doing only, you're only just, doing basically two. Just think of it this way. You're going to do less. Yeah. You're just going to do less of everything. The biggest mistake, the biggest mistake athletes make is they train a particular way off season. Yeah, they try to, they try to make more, progress more in season. Better. And, yeah, yeah, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna keep trying to get stronger while I'm playing in this really hard season. And then that's how you hurt yourself, or that's how your progress drops. And then when their prog their progress starts to drop, they think they need to do more. Oh, I need to push myself even more because the <clears throat> mindset of an athlete, especially at your level, you have the mindset, you have discipline, you'll push yourself through, which is great. But that could be your worst enemy. Well, so. the way the way the mind shift shifts for me as a coach is when we're off season and every day you and I are meeting, I'm asking you about strength. You feel stronger, and are we are we moving the weight? How's 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 your form? How's your technique? And we're pushing performance. We're pushing weight. We're trying to get stronger. When we get in season, I'm not. I don't give a shit about your bench. I don't give a shit about you. I don't care if you're if it goes down. What I care about is how you feel. Mm -hmm. How was performance on the field? Did you play good yesterday? Was your energy levels yeah. good? How's were your you, sleep? Were you swinging the back good? How's your sleep? Like yeah, I'm asking more stuff like that when we're in season because now it becomes all about baseball and making sure that you feel good for that. I'm not really worried if we we lose a little strength on the deadlift or the squat or something like that because I care about how that translates on the field more than I care about what it does inside the In fact, the you should you you should expect to lose a little strength uh, in season. Yeah. That's normal with those lifts. And one one thing I do want to highlight too uh and you've been going through these mobility sessions, uh the stick mobility that's in there in mass performance is so applicable to baseball players. Uh and I just feel like it covers wrist, elbow, shoulder, yep. joint health like better than most of those moves in there. So really highlight that as a focus on your days where you do feel a bit like you're overstressed. Okay. Thank you, guys. You got it, man. Thanks for calling yeah, in. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate yeah. Keep us posted how the season goes, man. Yes, I will. For sure. Right. Thank All you, right, guys. All right, brother. Appreciate it. I, I, you know, every time I talk to an athlete, and you know, I, I, I feel bad for the first young athletes I trained as a trainer because <laughs> yeah, I overtrained yeah. the yeah, crap. No, I, I, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> you know, it, training an athlete's it's hard, like bro. Go back in time. That's 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 kind of the I don't know. I would say it's up there with like the pinnacle of of training. It's like. Uh, yeah. Because you have a you when you have a client who wants to lose fat or build some muscle or get stronger, like there's a lot of room for error. Yeah. It's like, oh, we could have a bad week. You could have a bad week and be programming. Like the first layer of the onion. Yeah. But when you get to an athlete, I mean, I can really fuck up a lot of shit. Yeah. So like every little And you also tend to think as a trainer, you oh, I have an athlete on my hands. So I gotta I, do this. I, I can push him that. harder. Yeah. I can push him harder because he has that he has that extra gear, I, which the is first the time, opposite. The first time I pieced this together, I was training an Ironman athlete and I, and he was so in tune to his performance and I scaled back and then I had to scale back and then I had to scale back and I scaled back to such a, what seemed to me an extreme amount. And then his progress started to improve. And then I had the realization, <laughs> oh my God, I was doing too much yeah. with all these poor people that I was training. I needed to bring it way, way, way back. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're in there, when they're in season, they're training so much, you know, your body can only take so much. So our next caller is Haley calling from England. Hi Haley. How can we help you? Hello. Um, first off, Merry Christmas, Mind Pump family. Hey, oh, same to you. to you too. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so first off, I just want to say I love the podcast. Um, it's made a huge impact on my life this past year since I found you. Not just about going to the gym and working out, but 
kind of more holistically because you have such great guests on, such diverse conversations that you've really made me look at, say, my nutrition and my mental health. And I guess it's just put me on a really interesting path now for even the rest of my life. So, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really appreciated. Keep sharing your knowledge and do what you do. Wonderful. Love Love that. Um, So a little bit of background is I started lifting weights about a year ago. I got my first MAPS program in January, and then I've run Anabolic twice with Prime the second time, and then Performance. And I'm now looking at doing Aesthetic, like you kind of recommend. And since August, I did a reverse diet. So I've gone from 16,000 calories up to 2,500 calories, and I'm tracking my macros as well to make sure that I'm hitting my protein. Um, and I'm trying to build muscle and I'm planning to kind of stay in this space probably till February, but I'm looking more to sculpt now. And I'm a little bit concerned because I've always been a bit broader in the back. So a bit more kind of that inverted V shape. So I'm going to focus on my glutes to try and balance out, but I am concerned about adding any width um, or wideness to my back. So I think that's to do with your lateral side delts and traps. And I'm thinking, can I adapt programs now to maybe cut out those exercises? I don't know if I should, if I can, say, cut those exercises out completely, the ones focusing on the traps and side delts, if I just reduce the number of sets, or if I do them, but with a lower weight, like maybe 40% less than my max, just so I'm not building muscle, but I want to stay stable and still strong and not set myself up to have a weakness where I'll get an injury. And I'm just now getting kind of lost because I can't program and I don't trust anyone to program, but you guys, so please help me. <laughs> Haley, Haley. I, so this I love is the way you asked that. question. Yeah. Okay. So I love this question too, because this was actually what, um, what Katrina struggled with when we, when she first finally let me kind of design her programs, she has, uh, broad shoulders. She has kind of a boxy shape. Honey, I love you. And I know we've changed that. <laughs> we've changed that completely. But that this was her fear, right? Because she kind of already has these these kind of broad shoulders. And so, you know, here I am telling her we're going to deadlift and I'm pushing the weight for her and building her back. And she's like, I do not want to be. And I know just just trust the process. Trust that I know what I'm doing. You're actually your first initial thought is actually right on right on point. I really wanted to build her hips and ass. So it creates more of this hourglass look in her. So even as her, even if her back were to get an inch wider, if I brought in her, her, got her hips thicker and more ass to her, and then I leaned her out, you actually will be in love with the way you look. And she absolutely is now, but boy, was it a hard, hard conversation a lot during that process, because here I am reverse dieting her. I'm telling her eat more calories. I'm, I'm building her back up what she's telling me. I don't want that. And I'm just like, Trust, and thank God she w- has watched me transform my body. So there was that trust there of like, okay, I know you know what you're doing, so I'm going to trust you, but just know that this is really difficult for me to trust this process. And I promise you the same way I tell her is, is to follow the programming the way it is, put emphasis on like what you're already thinking, which is build that ass, build those hips. And then when you go to the part where you lean out, and you lean down and you and you start to carve away what will be revealed is all your hard work and you'll be very happy with the end product i promise you so trust the process and and stay the course and i think you'll be really happy you start eliminating some of those those exercises in in fear of that and you actually will end up with a a lesser aesthetic looking body that you like i promise yeah and, I, and to add to that haley um Body fat is very voluminous on a pound for pound basis when you compare it to muscle. Okay. So if you were right now, if I were to snap my fingers right now and have you gain 10 pounds of muscle and lose 10 pounds of body fat, you would weigh the same on the scale, but you would be a lot smaller because muscle takes up less space than body fat. Okay. So when you go through the cutting process, things will shrink down. It's very rare for a woman to to actually get to the point where she builds too much muscle for her liking in her upper body. Usually what it is, is she's building some muscle, maybe a little bit like, okay, I don't know how this feels, a little insecure about it, whatever. But then when she gets lean, like Adam says, wow, everything looks really good and it really starts to come together. So that's what I would say. Now, now what you, what you were asking about with the workouts and how you can change them, you can also do that. 
But I would recommend you do that a little later just yeah. because this is a relatively new process for you. I wouldn't start modifying workouts in that way until you've been doing this for like another year or two to where you're like, okay, I've been doing this for a couple of years. I'm going to take away some exercises and some volume from this area, add it to this other area and do it like that. Right now we're looking at general. You, you know how we did this with Katrina is what, when, what I, how I convinced her is to say, listen, let me get you all the way down and leaned out at the leanest you've ever been in your life. And then together we will assess your physique. And then if you don't like something, I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board for you and say, we'll, we'll cut out some of this back stuff. We'll add some of this. We'll get, I will do that for you, but at least, at least trust the process with me and let me build that physique. Let me lean you all the way out and then yeah. you be the judge. And then if what ended up happening, oh my God, yeah. you know, she was so happy with the way she looked, but it was such a, 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 a psychological mind fuck going through it because that was an area that she, you know, openly was very insecure about for a long time. No, yeah. no I, I've never met a woman that says they like looking boxy and she looked, <laughs> she, she, she looked boxy because she had broad shoulders and she didn't mm -hmm. have much of a, an ass to her. And we built that we really did. And it, but it took her being comfortable with me letting her build her back and get strong and then leaning out when you get really lean, like Sal saying, you're, you're, you'll be blown away on, on, on how, and everybody holds body fat and water in different places. And part of what made her look broader is she, she held a lot of water and body fat in her low back and, and shoulder and back area. And arms, well, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. when we lean that all out, that's where it all went. That's the cool part is it's, it sucks when you put on body fat because it goes to that area you don't like. We, we've all seen those girls that are so lucky, right? It goes all to their tits and their ass. They look amazing <laughs> as they get fatter. But that's, that's not everybody, right? Yeah, that's a scientific right? term, by the way. So, that's so, not me. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's not my wife either, right? So when she puts on body fat, it goes to those areas she doesn't. Now, the positive side is when she leans out, that's where it comes from. So then when she gets down to that that lean body fat percentage where she's happy, it comes right off of those places. So that's the, the mm -hmm. positive side to it is that when you lean out, it'll go from the areas that you probably, you like the least that, that yeah. carry the most body one, fat. One thing I want to add, Haley, is that, and I, this is where, and this is true for both men and women, but especially for women, women's clothing is not designed for athletic women. It is not designed for athletic women. So you'll put on, you'll build a little bit of muscle, like the tiniest bit of muscle. You'll put something on and be like, oh my God, this doesn't fit. This happens to men too. If you're a guy who's lean with a lot of muscle, you go buy a dress shirt and it looks like a dress because in order for it to fit your shoulders, it's made for somebody with this massive waist or whatever. So consider this as well. As you become more fit, your clothes are going to fit differently than they did before. And they're, again, they're designed for people who don't work out. And especially when you're in the process of reverse dieting, it can it can mess with your head a little bit. It could definitely mess with your head a little bit. But I think you're, you're on the right path. You kind of just got started with this process. You're already seeing these results. Keep going. I think you'll be really happy with uh, with where you H end up. Haley, are you in the forum yet? Um, I'm on the Facebook one. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm oh, in good. that. So chat good with people. Yes, and please share share with us in chat. And when you have these these moments of doubt, be be open enough to to drop it in there so we can talk some sense in you and not allow you to overcorrect. Okay, and trust Thank the process. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, you. I thought you might say this, but <laughs> I just, I'm so eager to do the right thing. So thanks for the reassurance. I really needed it because I'm loving the programs and I want to trust. I just, yeah, I need you guys to say that. So thank you very much. By, by the way, your reverse diet's phenomenal. Where you were and where you're at now, that's incredible. Yeah, you're uh, doing change a great in metabolism. Job. That's phenomenal. Oh, thanks. That was scary. <laughs> it is, right? But I mean, how does it feel to eat like 2,500 calories now and just like your body just burns it? Well, yeah, it's that whole thing of, gosh, I can't eat anymore. I'm actually like, I don't want to eat anymore. So I'm sticking at 2,500, but it's awesome to eat that much food and also to feel the energy from it. It's honestly, it's blown my mind, guys. It's been so enlightening. And it's because I only trust you guys now, though. You're my only resource. So <laughs> I really needed to come on here and ask you those questions. So thanks very much. No awesome. problem. And then the programs that you have, which ones are you following at the moment? You want, you're in aesthetic? So, aesthetic, yeah, I'm in phase one. And I brought symmetry for my next one because oh, yeah, I like to have yeah. like a good you know program like you're saying with the future so that's what I'm doing next after this okay. symmetry okay do you have maps anabolic I'd like to send you some no, she has the whole RGB oh bundle. she's got everything yeah she there. has the RGB and she has symmetry I would say do you not have strong oh Could, yeah there you go that's have, a that's a really program. strong yeah. yeah we're gonna yes uh, we're gonna give you strong heavy okay. emphasis on the post yeah uh, yes a lot a lot of a lot of like on the back side so that you, is literally it's funny we, we wrote that program and women love yeah. map strong because oh, yeah. of the because it works so much the posterior chain so you talk about building the butt 
Map strong is a book oh, building. Yeah, we're going to send that one. Oh, to, we're going to yeah, send that please. one for free to you. I can't build my boobs. I want to build my ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so. Those are the, those, and that's a great order. So you're you're on the right track. What you're doing, what you did with the RGB, and then now you're going to symmetry, and then after that is strong. So we're going to send you strong. So you have that lined up after that. Oh, thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thank right. you. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Excellent. I loved her. Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, <laughs> that was Katrina to a T. Yeah. By the way. Well, you know, I tell you it's what, lot, like yeah. building anything can be a challenge for women, especially in the upper body. It could feel so challenging. Oh my god, I feel like I'm getting bigger. Like what's going on? But I, I you know, I always have to emphasize this. Like body fat just takes up a yes. lot more space. And even if you were to gain, by the way, gaining ten pounds of muscle for a woman, like ten pounds of real muscle, is a lot of muscle to gain. Even if you did that, when you got down lean, you're not that much bigger. Yeah. What you'll notice is you just got much better shape. So that's really what it boils down well, to. And you have to realize that we all we all hold body fat and water in different places. Yeah. And it, and we have these areas that we, we we're insecure about or we don't like on our body. And we think that, oh, I need to like correct the way I'm yeah. lifting or I don't want to do these certain exercises because it's going to make that worse. Like, no, that's where my body just happens to hold body fat. The good news is when I lean it down, it's that's where it's going to go. And mm -hmm. if you did a good job of building muscle in those areas, it's only going to make that area more sculpted and look even better. Yeah. And so, you know, here's Katrina telling me, I don't want to build my back at all. And I'm like doubling and tripling down on deadlifting and back exercises. And she's like, Oh, what are we doing? And I'm yeah. like, just trust me. Yeah. And then afterwards was super happy. Usually that's how it is. I mean, usually it's just that they are building muscle. They're getting strength. There's just a bit of body fat there that mm -hmm. they're not you know, happy with. And so once they really focus on that leaning process, it all reveals totally. itself. Our next caller is Corey from Tennessee. Corey, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, not much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, calling in just uh, with some questions more focused on nutrition. Uh, for a little backstory, I'm 37 years old. been lifting seriously for about 10 years or so now. And uh, while I have experienced some uh, good strength gains over the last three to five due to getting into powerlifting back in 17, um, I'm not noticing the experiencing the physique changes that I'm wanting. I'm 6'3", and I've sat at about 225 for 15 or so years. Um, my philosophy with diet for a couple of years now has been just thinking, well, if I'm sitting a little heavy, I'm getting the right protein. If I just keep strength training, eventually the muscle will win out. But I don't think that's been working for me. So I started getting serious about tracking this past spring and summer, and I've been cutting over the last three or so months, and I'm down to 210. Uh, I'd like to get closer to 200 because I think that'll put me around sub 15% body fat. Um, but then would like to start a bulk shortly into the new year and hit a new program to put on muscle. Uh, but I messed around with my calories this past summer and tried to bulk for a little bit there, but noticed the love handles coming in quickly and it scared me away. Um, so my, my main question is, do you guys have any preferred methods for honing in on your exact TDEE? Um, so, you know, your proper maintenance levels to calculate your bulk or cut. I, I have a question for you. When you, when you went from your kind of intuitive type of eating and you decide, oh, I'm going to start tracking, what were some of the things that you noticed that jumped out to you that you were doing? Well, uh, it felt like, well, the protein intake was definitely way more intentional. Um, but I felt like I was really having to eat a lot more to get the protein up. And I, I, I don't know what's really true out there, but I felt like being a little bit bigger of a guy, 6'3", 225, it was like, gosh, I'm having to eat a ton of meat or, you know, drink extra protein shakes to get up there. So that was a big thing um, if you're if you're asking specifically from a diet perspective. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. So, I mean, I think yeah. that's uh, – and, and typically, and that's what I love about tracking is – that's probably where you, if you're not tracking, that's probably the area. It's, and that's, by the way, the exact same situation that I'm always in because, it, you know, 220 grams of protein for me too is a, is a lot. And if yeah. I, and even if every meal I have is protein focused, um, I very easily can you know, grossly under consume protein. And that is, it has a, a direct impact on how much muscle I build and how fast I can get that metabolism yep. up. So I definitely make sure you stay on the course with that because that, that will be the difference maker in this. Yeah. So to figure out your, how many calories you should be consuming, you need to track what you normally eat for at least a week or two. And then if you don't gain or lose weight within that period of time, then that's about as accurate as you're going to get in terms of how many calories you need to maintain. And then you go from there. 
If you gained or you lost, then you want to adjust and say, okay, well, I gained two pounds during that two week period of tracking. And I was averaging well, 3000 calories a day. So my, my daily maintenance is probably a few hundred calories below, you know, 3000 or whatever, whatever that number was. So that's basically, that's really the only, the most accurate way you could do it aside from getting your metabolism tested at some university. But even then, I mean, your metabolism we still, shifts and changes. We still would recommend that. Yeah. We have a calculator it's online that you guys have free access to that we still would recommend this way. It's I mean, just this general like idea, but you got to track. That's really the only way. Now, once you track for a couple of weeks, now you have a number and then you work from there. Okay. I know that my maintenance is, you know, 3000 because that's what I've been eating for two weeks. I haven't gained or lost any weight. I want to cut. Well, I'm going to bring it down to 2,500 calories or I want to bulk and I'm going to bring it up to 3,500 calories. That's, that's really the best, most accurate way uh, to do this process. Okay. Yeah. Cause I always felt like the calculators with being bigger were kind of shooting me low mm. a lot of times. Um, and then also I'm in, in it. So, you know, unfortunately I'm sitting a lot. I have invested in stand up desks and try to move, but it's like, it's yeah, it's just been a nebulous area for me trying to figure that out. So, but it, it has felt like that's the approach I'm kind of going towards. And it's good to hear that affirmation. Yeah. The other thing is too, when you, when you do do like a reverse diet or increase calories is especially a guy like you and I who have already a hard time getting protein, really discipline yourself to, to get that from either protein sources or whole food sources and not let yourself yeah. justify, Oh, I'm in a bulk. Therefore I'll go ahead and grab that cheeseburger or I'll add some fry. Like, you know, sometimes we do that psychological game where, Oh, you know, the guys told me I should bulk. So I'm in the bulk now. And so then you start just justifying adding foods you know that aren't serving you very well and that is like a it's a it's a, a double whammy for a guy who already has a hard time hitting protein because then what you end up doing is you over consume on the calories a little bit and you under consume on your protein intake and that for like our body just it, it's all yeah. bad bro that's yeah. like you lose muscle and you put body fat on which gives you this yeah. like shift of oh shit i'm really not doing well right so really right. pay attention to that stay on top of that protein when you do decide to increase calories, do it from whole foods, try and do it through protein. Don't let yourself justify the treats and the bullshit of the calories because what you'll end up doing is you'll increase the calories, not hit your protein intake. And that's like the the, the worst of both worlds. Yeah. What did, what did your macro breakdown look like when you said you're kind of increasing calories and you had a bit of love handles kind of forming? Yeah. So I was, I was sitting for a little while when I first started tracking, I, I was guessing my maintenance was in the 26 to 2800. Um, so I had a couple of weeks where I pumped it up to 29 just to kind of see what my body was doing. Uh, but then when I, and even my wife was like, yeah, I've been noticing the little, you're a little thick in the waist. Uh, so <laughs> at like uh, yeah. 32. So when I was at 3,200 calories, I mean, it was, I, you know, based on some stuff I've just found online, I was like trying to get 220 grams of protein, like 90 grams of fat, fill it in with carbs the rest of the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can organize this. Uh, but with, with the amount of calories and protein you're eating, you're probably going to want to have maybe four meals a day, you know, and you yeah. don't need to necessarily go 220 grams of protein. You'd be fine with 200 as well. Um, okay. yeah. So 200 to 220. And so long as you hit that kind of calorie uh, target, um, especially if you're trying to cut, if you're trying to, you're trying to bulk, then of course that can go up a little bit or that will go up. A little I mean, bit. hopefully what I said hit home for you, because I feel like you, you, what the stuff that you challenge with is very similar to me. And I know that that's my, that's exactly what I, if I fuck up, it's because I'm not hitting my protein intake. I'm filling the cat, the extra calories up with carbs and fats and so mm -hmm. then I get this like, oh, then my, I just put on body fat. I don't put muscle on. So it's like so important that even when you go into a quote unquote bulk, that you get it from good good sources, whole foods, so that you don't put on the body fat and you actually build build the muscle. That and then we, I know we haven't really talked a lot about programming, which th th obviously that still matters here. Are, yeah. What are you currently running right now? And maybe what would be really good for you too right now is to do something, it. do something very novel, mm -hmm. something different that you would never really run. So if you gravitate towards the bodybuilder type program, maybe we run something like a map strong or a different, very different, unique program that, that would, could serve you too. So what are, what are you doing currently right now? Yeah. So, uh, well, I will say when I started experiencing the strength gains, I joined a powerlifting gym and at 17 and I got into, uh, I started using five, three, one, and I used that for like 
dude, like four years. Mm. And, you know, I couldn't even bench my own body weight before that, but got up to like, you know, 275 on bench and was feeling great about it. But my joints were starting to hurt. And I know you guys have talked about that if you stick to it too long. So uh, I've been doing a lot of study and I'm trying to find the right programs and cycle things more. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I do have a, a year and a half year, uh, year old son. So my lifting has gone to just like two or three days full body. Right now I'm focusing in the eight to 12 rep range for the past um, oh, four weeks or so, maybe six weeks now, uh, trying some more hypertrophy stuff and trying to cycle between like a power lifting to power building to hypertrophy and then rinse and repeat is kind of my philosophy. Oh, at so, the you, so you don't have any of our stuff yet? I don't. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, let's do performance. Yeah. What do you guys think about performance right now? For I think him? mass performance would be great, especially because he made the comment about his joints. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, you'd love mass anabolic. different. Yeah. You, sure. you would love maps anabolic after mass performance, but I think mass performance would make you feel good. Yeah. Go maps performance right. right now, then do maps anabolic. And then after that, I would do something like symmetry. I would love to see that order right there. Nice. But, but we're okay. going to, we're going to send you maps performance so you can do that. Follow that. Take the advice that we talked about nutritionally and then circle back to us. I think, I think you're going to, I think you're going to be happy. Awesome. That yeah. sounds great. You got Thank it. Thank you guys so much for that. All right, Corey. Thanks, Corey. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. No Have a good one. Yeah. People need to realize that guessing your calorie intake or guessing where you're supposed to be at, you are, all, you are always going to be off. Yeah. Always, always, always going to be off. If you want to eat, quote unquote, intuitively, you have to have a really, really good grasp of the signals of your body and you have to be able to intelligently manipulate on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the only way that it works. Otherwise, you're you're probably going to be off. Do you remember how much I pushed back when when we when you first wrote the intuitive guide and we used to yeah. talk about it on the podcast yeah. because of that? Because of like, man, I really I do obviously intuitive eating is the pinnacle of of eating around like health wise and stuff like that. And everybody should make that as a goal to get to. But boy, do I feel like 90 something percent of the people mm -hmm. are, are just not there yet, you know, mm -hmm. because this is a part where you, it takes a long time of of tracking and figuring this out to, to understand your body, understand your habits and behaviors of what you default to when you think you're doing a good. I mean, I'm doing this 20 something years and I'm, I, it never ceases to amaze me when I go back to tracking. I, I'm, I'm under overestimating stuff all the time still. Well, this is where I think too, we were kind of coming in with a, in a bit of a bubble in terms of like, we were around a lot of people that were like everyday gym goers, like people that were always like sort of stuck in that IIFYM kind of mentality of like, I am tracking, I'm hyper-focused on my macros yeah, like all this point. stuff. And so we were trying to kind of buck that at the time in terms of like, you don't want to stay there, yeah. uh, but your everyday average person, man, tracking is so enlightening. It, yeah. it just, it, it it's a learning process. So many things. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you look, if you do something quote unquote intuitively, it's going to be based on your current understanding and your current knowledge and knowing. And if your current knowledge and knowing and understanding on a scale of one to 10 is a two, then your intuitive diet is going to be, that's about as good as it's going to get. So it's just a process. But yeah, you don't want to get stuck in tracking. You don't and want to get stuck in counting because that's a that's a terrible way to live. That's not a good relationship with food. You want to have, you want to get to the point where you've got enough awareness and you feel good, and then you can kind of make those adjustments on a day to day basis. Today I'm gonna eat more of this. Tomorrow I'm gonna eat less of that. I feel this way, so I need more of this food or more or less of that food. And now you've developed, you're, you're developing a relationship with food. By the way, it's not a goal. There is no goal. This is a constant process. There, you know, my I am not the same today as I was five years ago, and I'm not going to be the same in five years from now. So that process of awareness, it's going to continue for the rest of my life. Yeah, I want to add to your analogy of somebody who you know is a two, and then they intuitive like a rate on a one to ten. They they're a two nutritionally as far as their education and understanding, uh, and they're trying to intuitively eat. The people that are a two many times think they're an eight or a nine. So that's another part of this monster is you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. A lot of times you get somebody, if you ask them, Hey, on a scale of one to 10, like how, what's your nutrition knowledge as far I as eat healthy. Yeah. Or I know what a protein, I know what I need to, I know my macros. So they, so they would rank themselves as like an eight or a nine of understanding, but because they really don't know how to apply that to themselves or have ever seen if they consistently do that or know their own behaviors, they're really a two. So be aware of that also, because again, back to, you know, picking on myself, I, I would give myself a 10 
at knowing uh, like this stuff, and yet I still fuck up and under and overestimate yeah, on, the, on the my key macros is, all the, the time. The key is assume that there's a lot that you don't know that you don't know. Okay, just assume that because then the next stage is realizing what you don't know. Then you're like, oh my god, I I I am a two. That's the, what's going to happen at first. But initially, just realize it. Say, okay, I, I, there's a lot that I don't know that I don't know. So let me try this process. Let me turn the lights on a little bit, look around, and realize the direct, you know, what directions I need to go and what I need to learn. And that's the process. That's the whole process of it. Otherwise, you're going to base your your nutrition off of the your current understanding. And I'm going to say this right now: 99% of people in modern societies base their food choices on palatability. And they ignore every other sign. They pretty much ignore every other sign. So if they eat intuitively, it's going to be what tastes the best. That's basically the direction they're going to go uh, the entire time. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. And again, they're all free. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is also on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 